Well, that was one of the better episodes of the series. My name's Chris. I'm Christy. And this is still the washing up. Um, and yet we are still going. We're, we're bravely battling on. Indeed. Indeed we are. And, and we have, once again, a, a very special guest. Hey, Beck, how you going? Hello. I am very well. How are you? We're good. We've, we've, we're get, getting you now because, of course, you are going to school. I am going to school. You're learning. I'm, I'm greatly en- enjoying. Right in there. Greatly enjoying following your Twitter adventures through culinary school. It's wonderful. Aw, thank you. I know. I, I did. I did notice the whole. I forgot my pencil case the other day. So, you reminded oh, me of one I of did. my students. Except mine don't have pencil cases to start with. Oh, <laughs> it was almost disaster. But I remembered it today, which would have been more disastrous because I keep my USB stickers in there. Ooh. So, oh, oh, lucky. I love the fact that we've broken it down to pencil cases of places where you keep your USB. I can know, uh, Dave. It was all slate and chalk, all these fancy <laughs> Oh, no. It was those really cool, you know, the magnet boxed um, pencil cases that were, oh, like, yes. squishy on yes. top? And you yeah. had the both sides. Yeah, they were they were in. And with, the, like, the sharpener embedded in it. I had they, those. Could they have come back in. They sell them at Smiggle. <gasps> I must My get daughter one. has one. It smells like grape or purple, whichever you prefer. <laughs> it smells like purple. They say purple. They say purple things taste like grape, but it doesn't. It tastes like purple. Yeah. No, they never smell like grape. Grapes don't grape smell anything does not like that. Taste like a, no, grape does not taste or smell like that. Like the so strawberry I shortcake say that smell. It's purple. Yeah, yeah. strawberry stro- short, strawberry shortcakes. They just smell, the the um the the doll just smelled like pink. It smelled like. like Pink plastic is what Pink it smelled plastic. like. Yeah, yeah. Just so, like yeah. a purple grape. Yeah. So yeah, we've actually got a, a good episode to talk about because it was it was actually I think one of the best episodes of the series. Well, it was made more interesting, I think. Like. Yeah, was, was it just us? Because we were commenting. Same old, same old. We were commenting when we were watching it that it just seemed to us that everyone was having better interactions this time. Yeah, and there were some good puns happening, and, yeah, and there were some really good zingers. It was zinger oh, week. I've got notes. I've got lots. I I laughed heartily all the way through this episode. And being the history nerd that I am too, (laughs) this episode was perfect. I I just liked liked Sue rocking up with a tuba to start with. (laughs) I paid good money for this. I paid good money for this. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I, I... I think that, again there were some of the great Mel and Sue puns of the series, including you know, little, ah. little little ones like you know, well that's an Aragon, <laughs> two arrows to go. It's like <laughs> Jane, I want to see more from you. <laughs> and then and then of course the way that that Mel had to do that, get it, get it, Jane, Jane Seymour, <laughs> Jane Seymour. I get jokes. <laughs> so. And the other thing we wanted to, before we get into the challenges that we needed to comment on, I think, was where Candace referred to them as the Spice Girls of baking. Yes. Uh, yes. Chris and I were <laughs> disagreeing. Before Jerry left. Yeah. Chris, Chris and I were disagreeing on who would be, who we'd cast as Spice Girls. And I think the reason for that is, is that not a lot of them have a lot of strong personality to put in there. Like, I said Candace should be posh and that, like, to, not Tom, what's his name? Ginger, what's his face? Andrew. Andrew should be Andrew. ginger for obvious reasons. <laughs> for for colour for color reasons. <laughs> for colour reasons. He matched it. But Chris was disagreeing and saying that Candace should be ginger. You know, we have the important debates in this house. No, Candace is posh. No, but posh has no personality. She's a personality vacuum. Um, and, and, yeah, and let's face it, Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew's the only one out of anybody in that tent who realistically works as Baby Spice. <laughs> See, I had Jane as Baby Spice really doesn't work. I mean, although uh, she was allegedly older than you know, they said she was, so that might work. Yeah, I just said Jane was Baby Spice because she's kind of got the big eyes and that kind of thing. I was just going for pure looks. And I had Selassie down as sporty. Which de- by default made Benjamin a um, scary spice, but that's not. I'm trying not to racially profile people. To be fair, you were choosing between Benjamin and Selassie. Yeah, and I think Selassie's more. I mean, I also had Jane down for like sporty because she was wearing Converse, but. <laughs> I just. We have very big baking debates on this show. <laughs> Question the important things in life. So pies. Um, pies. Now there wasn't a sweary pies. canary pie drop in sight. Pies. 
No. Yeah, there no. was no sweary canary pie drop inside. Oh, if only someone no. just dropped one and said fuck, it would have been the best episode ever. Yeah, that, that would have been. That would be awesome. me. If I was on there and dropped my pie, I'd be saying fuck all over the place. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that's what like, we said. Totally. As we said when 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 Fee did that on Australian Bake Off, it was it was one of the highlights of the series. <laughs> like, I think I would just be a constant series of bleeps. So you wouldn't <laughs> hear me talk very often because I would <laughs> be swearing. Just carry your own. Just with you at all yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> but I we chatted about this just briefly off air. Oh, off air. Look off at air. us. Look at us sounding like <laughs> a radio We're radio <laughs> professionals <laughs> with a cat sitting between us right now. Anyway, go on. In like the thirty seconds we're quickly chatting. It's like the difference between English and Australian pies. Like who the fuck layers pies in Australia apart from yeah, pie flavor? No, you just whack it all in together. Yeah. Yeah, you stash everything into the pie, you know, you get rid of all the stuff you don't want anyone to see and put it inside the pastry. And they had layered potatoes and pork mints. I mean, I like and pork apricot pies. Was, apricot was layered. Well, that's mm. a good idea, though. Oh, maybe, nah, I, I like both sorts. Let's have all the pies. You like country and western is what you're saying. <laughs> <I do. laughs> um, you can never go wrong with pie, though. Like, you can't. Pies are delicious. You pop a pastry like, around like something. Like pie is there's something wrong with them. Now I have to ask the question. Now we're talking about pies. Now, do you just eat the pie normally, or do you take it apart and dismantle it? And do you have a, an order if you dismantle it that you eat it in? No, I eat pie normally. But when I was little, I used to pull the lid off. Yep. And mm-hmm. eat the middle with a spoon. Yep. Yep. And then eat the base yep. and then save the lid with the sauce until last. Mm. It's very close to what I still do. <laughs> I take so the you... lid I take the lid off, I eat the lid first, then I eat the inside, then I eat the case. Yeah. Uh, I do that too because I'm juvenile. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a toddler. Um, well, and I'm eating no, a lot I, of the... I've grown and I've matured in pie eating I've... and now I just eat pie like, you know, a normal, like a normal person. person. <laughs> no. I do that with, like, the party pies, but I don't often have a party pie. Yeah, I do that with party pies and I, I only do that. I, only, I have a party pie every Friday at um, staff morning tea. Oh. To various degrees of cooked. So, like, last week's, last week's were raw, so everyone just no. sort of went, yeah, no, let's not do that. That's a crime against pie. It was a crime against to pie. To not cook your pies properly, people. Exactly. Don't be committing pie crime. And it was worse because I was on a duty and I came back in and went, oh, look, there's a lovely pie. And I went, eh, that's not a lovely <laughs> pie. And, yeah. Disappointing pie. Disappoint. Nothing like a pie disappointment, really, is yeah. there? So. Oh, that's just the worst. Oh, disappointing horrendous. pie is just so disappointing. And yeah. and what wasn't disappointing, however, was yeah. some of these designs. Pretty awesome. Jane's effort to do segment by segment of a Tudor rose because she only had half a set. Yep. Was that was? I tip my cap. Pretty. I would not have done that. Pretty that was lots of pie effort. Yeah, well, she's like, I want to do a Tudor Rose, but I've only got this many of the moulds, so I'm just going to do it in bits. <laughs> and Paul <laughs> just looked at her and went, that's too much. And she's like, well, yeah. <laughs> and but she did it. She, she pulled it off. And it looked she, amazing. It really did. And um, Andrew, I have to say Andrew's was my favourite. That yeah. was amazing. I, he's looked like a showstopper. You know, mm. like it wasn't just like this is the The, the first one that everyone ignores. It was. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Incredible. I I do have a bit of a question with Andrew though, and and <laughs> okay. No, I legitimately have a question with Andrew, which is, <laughs> is he doing too much of that in so much as it's sort of trying to distract a little bit from the bakes themselves? No, his and pies I, were but good. I only asked this because he tried the same thing a bit when we get to the showstopper. Mm. where he tried to do the, I'm going to do the heavy level production number again, except that he hadn't got his bake right. And he also focuses, if he gets it all right and gets all his orders right, it's spectacular. But the second one part of this order goes out of whack, he's lost. Yeah, but that's like Uh any, any of them. Like, they all have some great ideas. Yeah. And they go in and the execution either works or it doesn't work. And Andrew was lucky in that most of the time he's come off. Like, he, he actually pulls them off. Again, I'm just just putting the question out there. I I think that he he does a lot of extra levels of presentation as opposed to necessarily consistency in flavour. Yeah. Those pies were good. Uh, he doesn't compare to Candace. Candace goes way above board. Like her I agree. ideas are 
you know, OTT, like... I agree. Know, I've really got a philosophy... The boat out. I've got a philosophy about Candace, though. We were talking about this when we were watching the episode. Yeah. And we'll mention it now. We'll come back to it for the last part, which is that Candace doesn't do small bakes very well, but she no, does anything small. that's big and grand brilliantly. Well, obviously pies weren't her forte. I mean, she had a nice idea popping the and oyster the in the And the flavour was good. The flavour was good. Her just The rest of yeah. everything just bled out. So. But yeah. she struggles with those smaller bakes because she tries to make too much out of them. But when they give you something grand, and think about it, the two big challenges really they've given so far this series was the marzipan, and before that <laughs> was the, the pub. Mm. And yeah. she nailed both of those. So she can do the big challenges yeah. really well, but she can't do small ones. It's really weird. You'd expect uh. it to almost be reversed, that people struggle with the big challenges. But no, she struggles with something simple. But on a random note, I just want to say, Selassie trying to bribe a... Like one of the, um, not judges, but someone with Mel. pie. You're yeah, trying to judge, bribe, bribe, bribe like, with pie. Wrong, wrong host to, to bribe. You should be bribing Sue with pie. If you watch this I episode. I think she likes pie a lot. <laughs> oh. What? I if just you watch, heard. If you watch this episode, <laughs> this episode was mostly Sue Perkins walking around the tent eating everything. Yes. <laughs> like, I, lo- I loved the moment she went over to Andrew and came back with a bowl going, are these your well cuts, day. Andrew? <laughs> I just walks off with the bowl. Walks off with the bowl. I call it breakfast. <laughs> I call it breakfast. Um, I like the fact that Candace used cheaper meat for the pie too. Yeah. Because that's what I do when you've had the, the pies that I make. Well, everyone knows you yeah. use the cheaper meats because they take the you know you need to cook them longer because they're stringier and you know tougher yeah. and yeah. and they work better in a pie. But the, the, uh-huh. but that's the thing. I mean, the latest trend at the moment in all these places is oh, we, we use prime cuts of beef. No, 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 no. Don't no. use prime cuts of beef. The flavour works better if it's fattier meat. It's like in Australia to get mutton is a bloody hard thing to do. Mm. Like to get proper mutton to cook stuff with. But I'll stop bitching about the kinds of lamb you can get in Australia or sheep, I should say. <laughs> and we'll keep talking about pies. So, um, now all I want is Moran lamb, but anyway, um, we were watching. We were, side note, we were watching one of the Anthony Bourdains the other day where he was in Sydney, and Matt Moran took him. Matt Moran took him around and, and showed him some Moran lamb, mm-hmm. and I was insanely jealous, as I always am. Whatever Matt Moran's giving anybody Moran lamb, um, I've heard good things. Um, I loved the first of the Hollywood looks of this episode was when <laughs> Paul goes. So you're shaping triangles by hand, and Candace went, yeah, and Paul just gave her this look like, what? What the hell? What are you doing? And then, of course, so possibly the line of the series <laughs> was when they went to Selassie's bench and he was using all the wild meats and the game meats and those sorts of things. And and where, where uh, Mary Berry turns around and goes, you know, Selassie, are they wild for game? And Paul interjects and goes, they're livid, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I which laughed is, out loud. Which is a callback to my favourite, one of my favourite comedy sketches ever written, which is the, for those who have never heard of it, it's, it's Gerald the Gorilla. From, oh, not from the Not the Cock News. Yeah, it's it's a yeah. very, very famous sketch. With the, with I know it, the yeah. Gorilla. Yes. So uh-huh. if, if you haven't heard of it, for those people at home, go and watch it. It's brilliant. Wow, that was absolutely livid. Um, <laughs> So it was great to see that reference. I like it when Paul Hollywood does that occasionally. It's, you know, fun. And, of course, Benjamina with the classic Tudor flavours of Mexico. (laughs) I know. I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Well, weren't the conquistadors around then? That time, is that what Spain was doing? When was that? No. Come on, history person. Yeah, you're around the right sort of era, but not really. Um, I I just don't know how you go. It's Tudor week. Let's go Spanish, shall we? Mexican? Mexican? Mexican. Doing Mexican. It's like, how? How do you go? <laughs> Look, it's... Yeah, funny. I don't make that. I wouldn't have made that connection. As much as I love Mexican, you just... Try to work really it in everywhere. tie the two together. <laughs> Look, Senor Henry Tudor. <laughs> it's all about... It is, in ya. The capsicum. We have a virgin queen for you. Um... <laughs> Apologies to anyone out there who may be Mexican and is insulted by what I was trying to make a Mexican accent, but realistically was Alan Davies' impression of anybody from South America. Um, so, um, and you, 
Christy must have been quite impressed with the fact that Candace was using oysters. Yeah, she was just shucking oysters. It was great. I like some oysters. Although my birthday oysters issue made me sick, which was kind of sad. So I'm off oysters at the moment. Which wasn't my fault. No, no, no. You were lovely and bought me oysters, and then they made me sick. So Aww. no, yeah. I don't like oysters though. They would have made me sick anyway. <laughs> and 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 just just a little nerdy side note, by the way, again because that's what I do. Um, when Candace was talking about, wouldn't it be so nice to find a pearl in one of these oysters? Again, for, for the record, people, the oysters we eat don't produce pearls, so you're not going to find one. That's why the restaurants feel really confident when they go, if you find a pearl in your oyster, you can keep it, because you're not finding one. <laughs> if you're finding a pearl in your oyster, just be, like, careful. You worry about what like, you're eating. Someone drop a tic-tac in your oyster or something. <laughs> this, this pearl tastes quite minty. <laughs> I got an orange pearl. Um, <laughs> Ooh, I think this is a red apple pearl. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so then <laughs> it was it was an interesting sort of challenge because while they were while they were doing the actual pie making, Candace sort of Candace came up with the valve offensive. In my eyes, a pie should have a little bit of gravy spilling out. Um, after Mary Berry had distinctly said. There should be nothing spilling out of that pie. <laughs> and I just got this image of Val screaming at the TV, going, That's what that's what I'd say, Candace. Good girl, you learned a lot. <laughs> and um Benjamina and Selassie accepted very early on that their pies weren't going to work. <laughs> I was amazed at how early they conceded that. Well, only his middle pie, wasn't it? The game pie, like his other pies were fine. Well the pastry was really thick. Yeah. But yeah. both of them just very early on just went, These aren't gonna cook. And uh, just went, oh well. Say la vie. It, it's the earliest I've seen anybody concede that a bake wasn't going to work. And I think I think Selassie was thrown off by Andrew, who Benjamina came over and said, oh, look, he seems, he's they're all in on time and he seems to be taking it easy now. And, like, Selassie's, like, mind just got blown, like, I'm the dude that takes it easy. <laughs> you're stealing my gimmick. <laughs> yes. Leave my shtick alone. Although I think he was also a bit distracted by the fact that Sue stood there for a good 30 seconds with a uh, sprig of rosemary up her nose. <laughs> waiting <laughs> for him to turn. Area. I know. I was, I'm was. i just there going, no, no, don't turn around at all. My, like, all in my head, I'm just going, oh, my God, that would be so uncomfortable, but the funny factor is, like, so worth it. <laughs> I didn't want him to turn and around. He just took forever when he turned around. It was just. So classic, like, oh. I just really wanted her to get all the way to judging. <laughs> Selassie, <laughs> what do you see? I don't know, Sue, and his head's looking every other way apart from it. <laughs> don't acknowledge it. Just don't, don't acknowledge, acknowledge it. it. <laughs> make it. Make a commit to the joke. So, obviously, Andrew won that round, hands down. Oh, he did quite well, although ah. I, I also have to throw in the, the greatest out-of-context line we've heard in a while, which was, Paul's just giving it a squeeze and then giving me a look. <laughs> oh, that was to Jane, Jane's when he walked past the bench, pie. let over, squeezed the pie and walked away. I believe a US president has done that in the past too. Apparently. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, it was an interesting first challenge. No one was really horrible. No one, you know, Jane was... No, everyone did quite all right. Jane was good. Um, which she always is. Andrew wowed everybody. Again, they liked his flavours. They didn't fall over themselves with the flavours, but they liked it, and they really liked the design, which was good. It was a very good design. Yes, um, yeah. Physically move it around. Mechanical pie. Although I did like the way where they're like, can I turn it? And he looks and went, can I, can I turn it first and then maybe? <laughs> it's like, wouldn't he have tested it out before then? Like, No. Why not? He wasn't ready. Oh, my God. He was too busy waiting at the... Oh... So that then brings us to the technical, which was jumbles. Mm. <sighs> and not honey jumbles. When they first said that, when I first watched it, I, I was think expecting like that. little... That's what you know. I thought too. Yeah, I went the and same place. And then it's place. like, well, they sound disgusting. Mm. My first thought was when they went jumbles, and I'm like, were honey jumbles around? Mm. Did the Tudors invent the honey jumble? And the thing is, when they showed the designs, I'm like, like, you, you, like your Tudor home cook... Seriously, have you got that much time on your hands? I mean, you know, I've watched like the those um shows where they recreate, you know, like the Edwardian house and that kind of shit, and it's like 
you wouldn't have time to make jumbles like that intricate. You'd be lucky if they were like just a round little ball. You'd be too busy selling your third daughter off to France as, as part of a diplomatic challenge. Exactly. The whole you point need of it. cooks. Exactly. Um, as Paul Hollywood said, what, what we're testing them on is dexterity, and as I added, then and whoever's plaited hair or is into Celtic history. Celtic knot work is different. Like it's hard. I know someone who can do it. Like she can just draw Celtic knots off the top of her head, but she's a bit like crazy and fanatical and pretty awesomely creative. But it's only one person. Like how would how would you have gone with the layering there, Beck? No. <laughs> there, I, now my brain would not be able to work that out at all. No, I, I would have gone. So, you like sticks? <laughs> I like sticks. I don't, I don't know why anyone would want to take the time to do that. I mean, yes, if you can pull it off, it looks amazing, but it would just take so fucking long. You know who they needed back? Yeah. The girl guide woman. What was her name? Kate. Yes. They needed Kate back if she'd done a not badge. Yeah, but but then, but then Kate would have just been doing things like half hitches. Yeah. But what I thought was hilarious is Andrew thinking that the diagram was to scale. Oh, yes. Oh, God. I know. We're going to jump, jump forward to that and come back because Andrew actually measuring the diagram and then it fails and then he said, obviously my measurements were out or it's the diagram's fault. <laughs> and it, he actually blamed the diagram which he did not say measure the diagram. He did not say to scale. <laughs> Jumble not to scale. <laughs> Andrew's like, I'm going to be really clever here and measure the diagram and convert it. It honestly looks like clip art, like not work clip art. Yeah. Like you could look up um, how to do an overhand knot. Look at me remembering shit from guides and find that out. I would have done a reef knot because I can tie one of those behind my back still. Yeah, it's the kind of shit we learned at Brownies and Guys. Yeah. If I ever need a reef, not in a hurry. Yep. I know who to come and to. done behind my back. <laughs> there we go. Well, you, I, I, I did say to you the other day, I learn something new about you on air every week. There you go. You'll be testing me on my reef knot skill shoot. It's Soup. brilliant. Shoon. 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 Yes. Shoon. Shoon, trude, and purr. Shoon, trude, and purr. But I like the fact we're getting into the good instructions now. Mm. Their instructions for this episode were... Make a biscuit dough. Make a biscuit dough. Mm. And they were also given aniseed, mason, caraway. <laughs> and to Andrew's complete bemusement, a mortar and pestle. <laughs> how can. A very tiny mortar and pestle. But how too. can Andrew be confused by a mortar and pestle? He just seemed stunned. Like he didn't know what it was. Like he's looking around the room going, what is this? Like banging it together. And like. He's just a baby. He's exactly. He's a baby spice. Thank you. Thank you. He's a that's baby spice. Oh, that's <laughs> no. He led that. He led us. Twisting there. your words. <laughs> um, right, you. It was really funny to watch everybody overly precisely measuring. <laughs> like separated into th- three fifths and two fifths. And there they are, absolutely put to the point where Jane had the leftover ball and cut it into fifths and put a little bit on <laughs> on each. You know full well that if Paul Hollywood is making this dough, he's just looking at it and going about there, bang. He's not measuring it out that specifically. Oh, you know, there's two to housewives though. Gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone who's measuring that specifically on the three fifths. It's like bang, done. There you go. There's your dough. <laughs> like, it was just so pedantic. And for some of them in particular to be that pedantic was just weird. Well, so I would be. I'm pedantic. I'm not. <laughs> I was a bit worried with that, that triketa. I believe that's the name of the thing. Oh, we're going technical. The, the triketa um, not work, that they were going to, like, summon things like Shannon Doherty and Rosa McGowan. <laughs> <laughs> The chicks from Charmed were about to come and go, where are our jumbles? <laughs> we go and fight some What demons. you're suggesting is it was a portal to a jumble world. Yeah. See, yeah, I am. See, what I love about this challenge, and I mean, look, jumbles, yeah, you know, it's okay as a challenge. It allowed Mel to say two of the funniest things <laughs> this history nerd has ever heard in his life. It allowed for Mel, and I actually wrote these ones down word for word because, damn it, they were so good, was when she was explaining the knot. 
<laughs> and she Wasn't said, I suspect, you know, I, su- I suspect that it's um, Henry and Anne's hands meeting around the knot of the tricky situation that they were in. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so earnest about this description of it. And then the, the tricky- best one, which was the gap. <laughs> <clears throat> The gap, I believe, symbolising the disillusion of the monasteries and the division between church and state, and the gap symbolises the alienation that Henry felt. (laughs) It was so earnest. It reminded me of something we used to do when the monorail was still in Sydney and still a thing. And there was a period of time where a couple of my friends would get on the monorail uh, and we'd have a little bit of time up our sleeves, we'd be on the monorail, and we'd just go around in a circle. And as tourists were getting on we would invent fake history <laughs> and like point at random buildings and then we wouldn't tell everyone what we were going to say and we'd just start coming up with what had happened there and then everyone would join in to the events and add to it and add to it and you just have the tourists going, oh, and they're getting... And you can just imagine them going home and talking about that's where the Australian Prime Minister was assassinated by a kangaroo. <laughs> and that's so mean. But funny, but very funny. And, but very mean. But very funny. And it was a good <laughs> challenge because you had to come up with somewhat, like we didn't come up with that one because that's not as believable, but you had to come up with somewhat believable histories. <laughs> and everyone had to go with it. It was really good fun. And it was a little bit like watching Mel was a little bit like that where she's just inventing this very true history of, of, of these biscuits being invented to explain Henry's kingdom. Yeah. It was wonderful. I did like the little cutaway again to find out about Tudor marzipan. They had to go into a proper Tudor hall and do proper Tudor things. I suspect that actually, I suspect that um, what had happened was that they'd, Mel had already gone and filmed her piece on Tudor sugar because she <laughs> before that she turns around and she starts explaining to Candace about the fact that sugar was a very rare item back in Tudor days and it was they used to hold banquets all the time about this. Then they cut to the piece where she was talking about the fact that sugar was rare in the Tudor days and they used to hold banquets on the occasion. <laughs> so I think she'd already done her, 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 her VO first and then they cut back to her in the tent talking about it. Yeah. Um, oh. I don't know. Would you would you have put the sugar on? I mean, and I know hindsight's a wonderful thing. Before or after? Before. Yeah, I would have put it on before too because you, you wanted it lacquered a little bit. Um, uh-huh. And and I felt that yeah, you wanted it lacquered and you wanted it to, to shine and you want because how else is the sugar gonna stick on if it's already right. baked? There's nothing to hold it. It's yeah. not like it's a donut. You're not like, you know. No, you want the flavour. You want the flavour. You want the flavour of the sugar to really sort of take over as well because you yeah. want to show it. And else. give it colour. Yeah. That's why that's why a lot of them went so pale. Yeah, and then they got a little bit yeah, and then that was the thing like when, when Andrew made a comment about Candace's going in there and was was talking about, you know, she's put hers back in there. Mine are very pale, but I think I'm gonna be okay. And Candace was the one who nailed it, you know, because she put the sugar on Took them out mm. halfway through, put the sugar on, and then put them back in. Mm. So it was interesting that what I found <coughs> fascinating was, and it was probably the only real mistake that anyone made, was that uh-huh. they struggled to follow a diagram. They yeah, really, which they really I would struggled. Be. Yeah. But they really struggled to, because if you actually had a look, they had it as step by step instructions. <coughs> yeah, but have you ever tried to tie a knot from like step by step instructions? Once I tied myself to the book. <laughs> the book on knots. I tied myself to the book on knots. Oh, <laughs> no, it's very difficult because there's like little intricacies and you have to be like a knot whiz to get it. <laughs> Is that a new show? Yeah, knot whiz. It's going to take over on... It's the, op- it's the opposite of rock whiz. Yes. Knot whiz. Yeah, they the all aim have... is to get all the questions wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the aim. So it was interesting because Benjaminas were raw. And in the terms of the, bulk, the bulky knots, which Paul had said beforehand that it was interesting that Paul commented that you need to do those bigger ones earlier because they're more doughy. And then they didn't uh-huh. really come back and talk about that at all. So no. they set it up as something people can get wrong. Benjamin sort of got it wrong, and they didn't even really focus on the fact she got that wrong. They just sort wasn't of, Selassie as well? He was putting his in at the same time? Yeah, Selassie did the same thing, whereas yeah. you know, Candace got the colour and the shape right. C- apologies to Dave Grohl for that. Um, colour and shape reference. Oh. Um, and Jane's were uh, not brilliant, but 
her pies were good, so that's what she ordered her. So going in, it felt like, before even Paul and, and, and Mary said it, it felt like it was between Benjamina and Selassie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it actually felt like they were setting up for Selassie to go. It was really interesting at the start when he talked about, I'm the only one here who hasn't been Star Baker. You know, yeah. that's an achievement in itself. It's almost like they're setting him up to to leave. Yeah. Well, I, I expected it to be him, actually. So I was did surprised I. when they said Benjamina. So did I, and I think so did he. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I think he was sure, and, and we'll get on to the, the showstopper now, which was the Marzipan centrepiece, mm-hmm. uh, the March Ugh, pain. Marzipan. Um, yeah, I know. Marzipan. <sighs> Um, it's like, I haven't tried it for ages, but the last time I tried it, it was disgusting. Marzipan and carob in a cake would be my my dream horrible uh, cake. I remember trying yeah. marzipan for the first time, and everyone's like, like I went, to, I was the B Hag family again. Hello, B Hags, love you guys. Um, and I got to try pumpernickel with them for the first time too, which is really cool. But I tried marzipan with them for the first time, like, oh, it's delicious, it's really sweet, you'll like it. And no. I ate it, and I went, no, never again. Sad. No. Sadness. sadness. Marzipan and carob, I told you. <laughs> Some more of that scroggin. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to the scroggin again. Always back to the scroggin, scroggin. again. Anyway, so the marzipan centipede, Selassie didn't seem to care. No. Nah. He just, he couldn't have cared less about his marzipan centipede. He's really up the middle. He, I'm not going to bake that. I'm just going to blowtorch it. Well, he yeah, tried which it three didn't times. work out for him very well. I got the feeling that Selassie had just decided... You this know what? It. I'm going home. I don't care. It didn't even look like there was a cake inside. You know, like it was just tiny. I actually like the idea that in Selassie's head, what he was saying to himself was, wait, we're doing marzipan? I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> next what's, week we'll be cooking carob. What's next, carob? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and and the, I, I did love Sue's reference to Sir Walter Raleigh's cheesy tear and share. <laughs> I just, I just love to see an alternate view of English history told by those two. I think it'd be great. Well, it could be in the works now that could be in the works. They don't have Bake Off. <laughs> um, now, I brought this up before, but Andrew is doing too much. Again, Candace does too much as well. We both know, and it brings her unstuck. All know, and it brings her unstuck all the time. Not tonight. Didn't bring her unstuck in this one. Andrew, on the oh, other hand, was got lucky. Andrew was brought unstuck. By his nose. By something that was quite sticky. And we have to go there because <laughs> it's... Andrew in the tent holding two little nuts, <laughs> waiting for them to drip. <laughs> and the way that he sat them on the nights... Ah, uh, that was wrong. And the look... <laughs> Paul gave him. The look oh, that Hollywood look, that gave him. Hilarious. <laughs> You can just imagine hour after hour of outtakes of them just laughing. <laughs> About Andrew's nuts. About Andrew's nuts. But <laughs> this was the problem, though. He put so much effort into those. I mean, he, what, three caramels? Yeah, but he also yeah. did the horse, marzipan horse, that yeah, he made marzipan, the mold for. But the marzipan horse didn't take a lot of time. He was no. just watching that, whereas... He made three caramels. Yeah, that's true. And they crystallized. If you looked at the to. rest of his marzipan and the cake, it had collapsed. Mm. You know, like one whole side of it was wonky, and he didn't yeah. bother about that because he was too busy holding two candy nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Watching. <laughs> it's so stereotypical of a man to be <laughs> ignoring the marzipan and concentrating on Just his nuts. Just because he was holding two ginger nuts <laughs> walking around. <laughs> And then he stuck them onto the gr- And I like the way that Paul just so understated just goes, you probably should have put those in their hands and placed them a bit better. I like to think that in some place in medieval England that there was there was green just. <laughs> So we just referenced groin, j- groin jousts. Which I'm sure is something featured somewhere. I'm sure there is. Okay. We'll go and book you that URL and your creator and website. <laughs> no. Groin jousting. Please don't Google that, people. <laughs> no, please let us know what the outcome is. Love to hear about it. So don't want pictures. We just love to hear about it. So anyway, um, <laughs> Andrew didn't really focus on the right things, focused on his nuts. Went badly. Yeah. Um, Benjamina's hedge. Yeah, oh yeah. Mary Berry seemed thoroughly confused that that wasn't a full size mate. <laughs> she did. 
there was this Zoolander moment where she's like, you'd have to be very thin to get through there. I'm expecting to go, what is this? A hedge for a maze for ants? <laughs> she's like, you'd have to be thin to get through. And it's like, it's a cake, Mary. <laughs> Once again, much like the knot in the diagram for Andrew, it's not the scale. scale. <laughs> I, don't know, I like Benjamin's cake. I thought it was fine. I yeah. thought it looked great. I thought it looked significantly better than, and again, I love Selassie, but it looks so much better than Selassie's. It actually looks like it had a lot of thought going to it. The bake was good in it. Selassie made a crown, and beyond that, just sort of. They didn't even talk about his cake. No. No, well, they, it could have done with cooking longer, they said. Yeah, they, so they said that his cake was basically undercooked and the outside of it looked a bit meh. And like, he, I think his idea was good. I think the idea was great. If he put more thought into it. Like, but, the sword was good and the crown hanging off the sword was good. But Selassie's... That's almost Selassie's whole series in a nutshell. Great ideas. But... Yeah. I don't think he... The execution's not there. Except for the roses that he piped, I don't think he, he got the yeah. execution. He's got the execution right on anything so far. Look, to be honest with Selassie, like he's someone that you could watch. You know, you could, you could see him on a cooking show, bantering about with say like Paul Hollywood or something like that. He's a pretty cool dude to watch, but he just didn't uh-huh. have the skills for the tent. I mean, and that's it's not really saying something in this year's lot. But I'm still tipping he'll end up on. Um, I'm still tipping he'll end up on British Bake Off. You reckon? I'm still with tipping Hollywood? he'll end up as one of the hosts. Or a judge or something like that. I don't know what they'll do, but it wouldn't yeah. shock me. I, th- I think by the time he got to the showstopper, though, like, you were right. Like, I think he kind of just given up that he was going home. So he just did it all really half heartedly yeah. And it was weird because, again, I, I mean, and, and he's Benjamin's biggest su- support in the tent. Mm. Yeah. And he, I think, I think he just looked at him and looked at her and just went, come on, really? It's not, it's not her going home. I'm going yeah. home. And Benjamin's flavours have always been pretty good. Um, it was it was an interesting challenge for her. I didn't think she did a bad job on any of it. No. Um, Jane. No. Jane was beautiful. The her top cake of, was gorgeous. The top of Jane's was just intricate. And how yeah. pretty did the sponge look? Like that looks like marzipan I would eat. But this is we, we we come back to this every time we talk, and we've now spoken to you about this a few times, Beck, as well. Is that Jane is just consistently good. She's except not chocolate collars. She's not out except with chocolate collars. She's, she's not never amazing. Yeah, not outstanding, but she's just okay. good. Like she bakes something and they eat it, knowing full well that nine nine times out of ten, it's going to taste like what she says it's going to taste like, and the flavors will probably be really good, and it's probably well baked. Mhm. And yeah. you know that's why they were a bit surprised with the not being so bad. I think was that it's Jane, and they weren't expecting that. But then. Said that top of that cake was so intricate. Yeah. And the detail was incredible. And again, as they said, the, the cake itself, Mary Berry loved that thing. Mm, like yeah. When they cut it, when they cut into that was when they said, this is going to taste good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they knew yeah. straight away. Um, and as we said before, Candace does big oh. really well. Wow. Yeah. That peacock was amazing. I mean, at first I'm like, oh, you got that idea from Nadia. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit of borrowing from Nadia with the pops and the colour and stuff like that. Yeah, but it but was the gorgeous. execution, the execution on that peacock, and like they were talking about the flavours and the you know, the mint tasted like mint and the orange mm-hmm. tasted like orange and snozberries tasted like snozberries. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but she also had the wow factor when they cut in the blueberries were in the middle. Oh yeah, the else. surprise. Yeah, 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 like it was a real Tudor um, inspired cake. What I what I liked about her challenge was that she put thought into this one. There was a lot of yeah. detailed preparation going into this. Those those peacock feathers. Wow. They were insane. And to have to bake them and pull them out and not have them crack. Yeah. I would have been terrified that moment of getting them off the paper. <laughs> oh, I kind of gasped a little bit. Well, thought, you could see Goodbye. the look on you could see the look on Mel's face. Well, she's just standing there looking at, oh, oh, no, oh, oh no, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but and Candace just went in with confidence and went, got this. Selassie's other thing that he did well, by the way, was I, th- I think what actually saved Selassie was the Mary Berry special. Oh, putting booze in it. Yeah. Booze. When in doubt, <laughs> booze. Babe. 
Um, and I like the way that she looked at him and went, you like putting alcohol on your bakes, don't you? And he goes, I do like a bit of alcohol in my bakes. And she gave him this look, not a wink. Just, like, just the look of you and me, boo. <laughs> and, and, and the other one was um, I also, again, the history nerd in me really appreciated the fact that he actually did historical research for his. <laughs> it was awesome. He just prattled out, and this the sword is to represent the battle. This, of... yeah, it, it, this, this represents the outside, represents the wives of, of Henry VIII. Yes. You know, and, and then he represented the battle with the sword, and it was at Bosworth Hill, and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. Historically, it was wonderful. I mean, execution sucked. Unlike most of Henry VIII's reign, where the execution was quite good. But <laughs> yes, history jokes. Nothing no. like them. No, 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 nothing no, like them. No. Yeah, no. someone should be keelhauled for that one. Anyway, um, overall, yeah, I thought Celeste was going home. Yep, and he yep. had the look on his face too. I, I don't. I didn't quite understand this one. This is probably the first challenge one where they've got, got rid of someone and I haven't understood it. No. Because mm-hmm. she didn't have a good week. No one's saying she was good, but she. I thought Selassie gave up. Yeah. And I thought it was obvious that he gave up. And if any, ever there was somebody sending a message to the producers going, I'm ready to go now, it's Selassie. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, they sent Benjamina, um, which was just—I was really shocked because we were watching the episode. I'm like, oh, it's either gonna be Benjamina or Selassie. And then when they mentioned, when they said like Benjamina's going home, I'm like, this, this, are, you, are they? Have they made a mistake? Is this like the Oscars? Is this is this the La La Land moment where they turn around and go, no, no, actually the winner was Moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight is the baker actually going out. Yeah. So, no, it was it was an interesting one. But, I mean, the other thing is, and this, this sort of has gotten away from all of us, I think, next week's the semi-final, mm. which it sort mm-hmm. of creeps up on you. I think yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to be yeah. interesting because you've got... Jane, you've got Candace, you've got Andrew, and you've got Selassie. Yeah. Which, yeah. I won't lie, I love Selassie, but I wouldn't have expected him anywhere near the semis. I don't, no. He's not going through the final. It's got, like, the other three are just miles ahead of him. And yeah. And he knows that. <sighs> be interesting to see what he produces next week. So that'll be fascinating to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. over, but overall, though, I mean, your your impression, same sort of thing. Surprised about it not being Selassie. Oh, I was completely surprised. I was just thought, oh yeah, they're going to say Selassie. And then, like, I was watching, and I could like kind of tell that Mel was going to say Benjamina, but she didn't want to. Yeah, and I mean, they really gave it away when they did a close-up shot of Selassie for forever, yeah. just before they and said then, it. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, that was, yeah, that was unexpected. Yeah. And I like how Jane said, like, she thought it was going to be her, and I'm like, no. What? Yeah, Jane's like, <laughs> I'm in trouble. No, you're not, Jane. No, no, you're not. I just want Jane to go and get some confidence, because she's such a beautiful talented woman and she and does just, always seem surprised when someone says she's done something really well yeah or she apologizes for it and like i know that i do that all the time too like oh, i'm sorry it's usually a particular week in the month but um <laughs> it's like jane i just i just love you darling i just want you to like understand that you're a, an amazing woman just i think she's gonna win She's uh, she's ahead. She's so she's, yeah. she's she's the consistent one she's consistent she mm-hmm. bakes well she's got Talent. She just needs confidence. So she's she's consistent and bakes really well. Andrew's got some really amazing concepts props. and designs and props. <laughs> um, Candace. Candace has good flavors in everything though. Even when she does something that looks really horrible, they always say tastes good. It tastes really good. Like that fluoro. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, that well, that green was thing. like it, it tastes great, but looks like a mess. Which I didn't think it was a mess, but anyway. <laughs> um, and then Selassie. Well, we we love Selassie. Um, Celassie, we do. Celassie, you'd want to hang out with. Celassie, you want to go on a bike tour of England with. Yeah, yeah. Because you know he'd do that well. He'd drive on the bike. I'd ride in a car. Cause so bikes are. 
weird. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. So that was kind of the episode, and it was a good one. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I was happy with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, again, it was it was Correct. a really good one. Now, now, just before apart we, from the ending, yeah, apart from the ending, which was a bit of a downer, but you know, <laughs> we're getting to that point of the season where it's going to be a downer anyway. So, uh, well, um, that's right, because we're coming to the pointy end of the stick. Exactly. You get you get to that point where they start, you know, shafting people with that pointy end of the stick. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, I heard all your references earlier in this episode. Give me this one. <laughs> I was going to say it's the pointy end of the jousting stick. <laughs> there was no pointy end of the jousting stick. It was very well rounded. <laughs> anyway, anyway, before we before we head off, just quickly as well to to let people know out there, when British Bake Off's off, we've got a couple more ideas. Obviously, before Australian Bake Off comes back, um, mm-hmm. but one of the things we are going to do, which will be off. Baking won't be baking related, but we are going to do a washing a very special washing up podcast coming up soon. Eurovision 2017. Yay! Apart from the announcement of who's representing Australia, which we, we won't go into. No, but, it's disappointing. But, but we're, we're all Italy. Um, we're Team Italy. We're Team um, Italia. But yeah, we're going to be podcasting um, after Eurovision. We haven't worked out if we're going to do both semi-finals and the final, or just the final and do the whole weekend. But once we've worked that out, we'll let you know. But we're going to be doing Eurovision this year, which we're really looking forward to because, you know, we do get up and watch it. Yes. We are those people. Yes, um, we are. And I may have a very large Eurovision Spotify playlist. So mm-hmm. so that's all coming up. And there's also something I'm not going to to say too much about it, but keep an eye out. There's a special podcast um, which will be dropping this week involving myself and a certain member of the Australian Bake Off fraternity not doing this sort of reviewing but we're going to be talking about um a show on netflix maybe chef's table they might nerd out maybe we we may be food nerding out so keep an eye out for that one that will be recording extremely soon Mm -hmm. um and quite excited about that one so thank you again beck for coming on we always love having you on pleasure thank you for having me is there anything is there anything you want to spruik while you're on the on the air uh, I don't think so, unless everyone wants to check out my Instagram, which is Bake Popji. Check that out. It's yeah. really good. I do that a fair bit because mm, there's some amazing well, baked you. goods on there. Mm. Um, and Ben, got anything coming out you want to plug while you're at it? Or? Oh, yeah, or he'll kill me. Um, he's doing Melbourne Comedy Festival, Woo. which is coming up very soon. Starts on the 30th of March, and I'm not sure when it goes to because I haven't paid attention to that. Um, <laughs> he'll be home at some point. He, yeah, he'll be home at some point. Um, and he's also doing uh, Sydney Comedy Fest just for one weekend in May, so you better get to that so you don't miss out, but you'll have to check dates. Um, he's breaking it all over um, Twitter and Facebook and everything, so we'll put, you we'll, can check we'll, that we'll out. Retweet, we'll and um, of course, he's got his book, so go and buy the book. Buy the book, and he will have another book coming out uh, later on in the year. Nice so work. look out for that one as well. Nice work. Yeah, we'll we'll retweet um, links for all the comedy festival stuff. I remembered seeing that his comedy festival show was on, so hence why I just prompted you there. So um, <laughs> thank you. All good, and and he can he can remember this around that week that he does Sydney Comedy Festival. Hint hint. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, having dropped that hint, I've been Chris. I've been Christy. That's been Beck, and we will catch you all later. Bye. Bye. Ciao.